like just sitting in that feeling. So I was just like, yeah, it's morning, it's beautiful, I feel refreshed, I feel good in my heart, in my being. I'm just grateful to be here. I'm just grateful to be and feel open and then just good in my body, in my mind, in my spirit, just grateful. And so I was like, yeah. I was just sitting in that, just the joy of, I'm alive, I'm breathing, let me take a moment and just intentionally breathe and to not feel stressed or overwhelmed or no longer feel like the whole process period I went through of like, I gotta have a morning routine and ritual and so wake up and <laughs> have this two hour long like morning rituals that will help my spirit be <laughs> collected for the day and without it, my day is just completely a mess. And like how it's gone from that to like these few sentences. I never looked at it like drop that. Into. You just made it sound like it was kind of funny. I mean, it is in hindsight. Really? I, I, I mean, because it felt very I serious very, at the time, I, I, and I needed that, but... I had to really make myself take it really seriously, though, for you, because not, not that I ever looked at it as yeah. a joke, but, like, yo, I, I felt like it was kind of overkill, but I understood you were reprogramming those. Yeah. So I was like, oh, I'm watching, like, I'm like, okay, I'm learning, too, that I may have to have a period where I do something like that, too. And I think it definitely did help, because I think without it, because of my being's proclivity of hyperfixation on certain other things, I don't think so quickly I could have turned the page to um where we ow. He's like, oh you hit the button. Where we are, where I am. You scratching your mama's really butt. <laughs> He's like, let me scratch it. I'm trying to return the favor. Was that helping you? Was it okay? <laughs> no, I was like, happy than him. He was like, let me help you. I'm trying to return the favor. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, you can just scratch it. Well, let me scratch it. We can, we'll scratch it. Okay, well, I guess we can. That's kind of cool. I don't think I've ever had that experience. <laughs> but yeah, so I think I didn't need that time period, but also I think I needed it so that I could realize that I didn't need that forever. Mm -hmm. Though at the time it was seeming like, oh, this is just what I have to do every day. But yeah, yeah I think it need, it... need to be periods of refresh. I don't think there needs to be periods of refresh, would, maybe like in like that way. Like I think if it, like I think if it comes organically, but I don't think I would like seek out doing that. Yeah. Again, because I, well, at least from a different space of mind and consciousness, because where I was before was like I needed it, and was like if I didn't have this, my day is horrible, is wrong. If I miss any part of this. One to two hour practice, like you don't think maybe there could be a chance you might be able to use it or maybe useful for another period or another challenging point in life. Possibly, but I don't that think. But I don't think. But that's what I said in my mind and in my consciousness, like where I was in that place, like mm -hmm. feeling like if I don't have this, everything is wrong and my day is ruined from the beginning. Yeah, yeah, and it's just gonna that. be a bad day. That's yeah, what I mean. Like mindset, I don't yeah. think in that mindset, but should. Yeah, but I'm just asking that, that you return to using the practice. Possibly. Like, I still will use pieces of it. I just don't think I'll ever be in this state again of feeling like everything is wrong if it's not yeah. in this way or if I don't do this whole string of pieces all together. Yeah. Um, but I do think some of the pieces may come back um, in different strange. ways. Huh? I didn't think that felt a little strange. But... Yeah, and I think it was, but I think I needed that. I think I needed to go through figuring out what worked for me and what was good for me, but I do think I needed that different structure and to show myself that I could do it because for a long time I avoided it and didn't do it because I was telling myself that I didn't have the attention span, I didn't have the self-discipline, I couldn't do all these things and that that was just going to be something that was always going to be for someone else. Unless I just completely, like I used to joke about, unless I just completely went off and did monk life, I, did, I just did not believe that within the confines or within the structure of how I live life, in quote unquote free society here of whatever free will and choice. And then becoming a monk is still free will and choice and doing what you've decided to do. But I didn't believe I could have a monk's discipline whilst being planted or existing in. Um, no, remember, no window? Um, while being planted. Windows open downstairs. Oh. Okay. Close those. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. 
Shit, I'm sorry. No, you're good. All right. I'm going to spit all that off. But no, okay. I'm very happy for you. I'm proud of your, Me too. Uh, your journey and progress, though. That's why I'm really good. I'm really grateful. And thank you. Thank you for holding space. And thank you for trusting me and holding space for me as I journey through that experience and for yeah, honoring it and supporting it. Thank you for sharing. Even when, teaching you, when you didn't understand, because I know sometimes you're like, I don't get it. Mm -hmm. But okay, you said you need it, so okay. Like, thank you for holding that space and coming from that space. Thank you. Same for me in so many other ways, man. It's the trade, right? Mm -hmm. This is what makes one of the things that makes us work so well. We space for one another in the spaces we need the space held instead of the spaces we want each other to hold it in. Sometimes it's not that easy. And not even instead of, I guess, in addition to. Mm -hmm. Whenever we can, whenever we have the bandwidth. Stick credence to each other and you know, the individual states of being we each may happen to be in at any given point. And trusting each other's process and then trusting each other and then trusting each other's process. Yeah. Even if we may disagree. I disagree, but I trust that this is something you need at this moment. Or something that is important to you at this moment, something you want. Mm -hmm. Play, explore, be an artist. Be and that makes me think of uh, one of the things in that video we were watching that day, where she said resistance is suffering. Say so what? Uh, where she said resistance is suffering. Yeah. Where well, that's kind of been a lot of where my head has been lately like, too. It's just that the, the biggest problem that I've had is resistance to whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Once I can let go of that, things get a lot easier. At least internally, it may there may still be some sort of challenge to um, enjoy or work through in reality, but well, in the three D world, but that does not mean that up here has which to be affected. Affects, which then translates to, exactly, yeah. and whatever this is seeing is obviously just what it is for the moment, and actually, it's passed by the time I've had a chance to process it. Yeah. So, and then in, in, a, less and in a funny stressful. way, it's <clears throat> past too, because it's past because it's being perceived through past eyes, That's what which I mean. are no longer anymore. That's what I mean, because time has taken place between the time the act happened and you had time to think about it. Even if it's a fraction of 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 a fraction we're experiencing is what was created by a self that we were even further back and so we're dealing with the latency of that and so also we're standing uh, as it, a it does click a different yeah it that's what i mean it's like, like, like so like yes like, yeah, so it's like it's the past of like the thing has happened and now i'm a different self even seconds later thinking about the past but also I am also dealing with the past because this experience that I'm experiencing in the 3D was curated by a self that, that I was that makes the... formerly and me now is now experiencing what was exactly. planted and now being harvested by a former self, but I'm not the self. I don't have to be the self now. I don't have to go back to the self, to being the self that planted it. I can still be this self experiencing and witnessing and then going back to that quote of see... <laughs> through not with the eyes of keeping in mind that like this experience was conjured by a you that you have already rel yeah. relinquished and been and are no longer. Mm -hmm. So can you show up to this harvest as your you now and just move through it, experience through it, if it's something that's quote unquote unpleasurable or unenjoyable, but something else I enjoyed from that video as well. I got I think her name is Malika. Um, but something else I enjoyed from that video of her um, covering Florence Scovelshin was that she talked about how when you're able to not distinguish between good and bad, but a practice that 
Florence was saying she cultivated was that she blessed everything. So even when something didn't go her way or wasn't what she was intending or desired, she blessed, she said she baptized it as a success anyway and said, thank you for the success or the success that this has created. Mm, yeah, and so giving yeah. gratitude, so she was like, she turned everything into an opportunity for gratitude, What that which we've been conditioned to perceive as good, and then that which we've been conditioned to see as bad or failure. She was like, I started blessing and baptizing every situation, every experience as a success, and that started producing for more and more quote unquote good or lovely feeling success because I acknowledged everything as something to give thanks for because it has a bit it is a part of my good and how that shifted everything so instead of having this moment of spiral meltdown because it doesn't feel good or it's bad or i it has been deemed bad it changes the whole perspective and gives you a superpower um and then she was reading some of florence's book where she shared um a, an experience from one of her students who said uh, it was back in New York in the 18 whatever is 19 whatever is and I think she said 1903 or something like that and apparently just New York has been New York since New York was established and so it was hard to find apartments it was another one of the apartment scarce times housing was scarce and this woman needed to move and her friends were like oh I'm so sorry it sucks that you're gonna have to you know put all of your stuff in storage and live in a hotel and her student said. Oh no, like I have the powers of Superman, like stay in a hotel. I'm my home is I'm my home I my home is already situated. Like I'm gonna have a home. Um and how blessing the situation before it happened, but also giving cognitively the idea that there is no failure, there is no this hasn't worked out and blessing every situation past present future as a success before it even gets far into its manifestation or whatever it is or, is, or isn't going to be how that creates a whole different kind of experience when you're not distinguishing either from what's conjuring up inside of you or Addie, her friends outside of her saying like oh this is what this means we feel so sorry for you this is going to be so bad but coming from a place of no 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 this is all beautiful it's all perfect and it's all already worked out regardless of the situation that I find myself in and then I enjoyed the other part of that story um be uh because it also talked about taking aligned action that speaks to affirming that your wish has been fulfilled Mm -hmm. because she said and then she also said you know the voice of evil or quote-unquote what we've uh what you could call evil or the quote-unquote devil is just that voice that speaks in contradiction to you or disbelief and so she talked about how as she was you know continuing to sit in the feeling of the wish fulfilled of having had having her apartment that she felt compelled to buy new blankets and sheets and she said, you know, that little voice said, oh, but what if you actually don't succeed and don't get this apartment? You'll have no blankets and sheets for nothing and still have to go to the hotel where there are already blankets and sheets. And she was like, mm, thank you, but no, we're going to go buy those sheets because I have my apartment. And then, of course, wound up getting her apartment. Everything else went wonderful, blah, 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 blah. But this idea that she created and, and basically that like that notion that we curate that right. that voice carries that yeah so i that yeah. talking about how that we really do have the ability to shift to change to adjust to um shift the energy and the space and the experience that we're having just by where we come from in it um psychologically or in consciousness how we decide to relate to the situation so I was really sitting with that especially when I had a few of those prickly moments yesterday really sitting with that bless the situation bless the person bless whatever it is that does not feel quote unquote good or doesn't seem bright or blah, 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 baptize it all as a success, as something to give thanks for, to be grateful for. Like that was what I was doing the whole time as we were talking about 
the contracting work and everything yesterday in the car and just things that felt like they should not be right. I just kept saying to myself, thank you. I give thanks for the blessing of this situation. Thank you for the success. Thank you for these lessons. Thank you for this good. Can't see it right now, but thank you. And I wouldn't even say having the can't see it right now, like that was the unarticulated, like the obvious for me, but it was like, I just kept saying like, even though I'm feeling like I cannot pinpoint what's good about this mm -hmm. they, Like, let me try this practice of like, okay, I baptize it as, baptize it as a success anyway. And then the first thing that came to me after thinking about, I baptized it as a success anyway, I was like, oh, had we proceeded with this contract work? things wouldn't be where they are right now. We wouldn't be moving forward in the ways that we are right now because we would still be held in a specific place in the journey of where we needed to go in our process. And so all this happening allowed things to expedite, allowed us to move in a different way. And so I was like, wow, that really did work. And so I just kept affirming even as the exchanges kept happening, like, Thank you for this success. Like this really has put us in a whole different, beautiful way. And then all day yesterday, we had mirrored back to us. Oh, how exciting. Oh, how wonderful it is that you're in this space and that you get to do these things. And this is so exciting. Can't wait to hear about your journey and where you guys are going, what you guys are doing, what life is going to be like, what are you choosing? And to get to talk about how freeing and liberating it is to be in this place of like, we are at a juncture. We are at a crossroads, so to speak. And we are literally getting to choose. Yeah. Like, we are getting to choose how we are showing up to it. Like, realizing yesterday, like, talking to the guy who came and was like, here are some more ideas. And it's like, oh, we literally do have this mortgage board of options where even a couple months ago, everything felt so small, so dim, so... um all of the words yeah, it synonyms felt like, it felt like a cataclysmic end instead of you know a, a glorious beginning yeah. yeah and kind of like what we were telling Kim yesterday and not glorious. That, that's over but no it does also, it feels also, like a, like, a Loki like, in like, this yeah. motherfucker like it is a glorious beginning and like getting comfortable and I think that's the other thing that I'm enjoying with listening and reading to a lot of this work is getting comfortable claiming that and also looking at what has encouraged me not to be quote unquote overzealous about anything that I do in life? Why should I not lean into this is a glorious beginning? This is my glorious part. I am Loki in this motherfucker. Mm -hmm. Like, why should I not come with this energy? Ooh. What has encouraged me? What has given me reason not to come and say, yes, this is my this glorious is my beginning or my glory, whatever? My glorious purpose. This is my glorious purpose. What? Why? Why do? Why am I for real, for real shrinking? What is great, or what I feel is great and impactful? And usually, it is because something else outside of me, or the fear of something else outside of me, has encouraged me to take on this more demure, smaller, or more quelled, contained, respectable energy of oh yes this is okay right? it's gonna be good it's gonna be a shrinking what is like no we really out here doing it we really in this it's, uh, fuck it we ball like we really <laughs> in in it and that is incredible and so hell yeah and, and we, it's we scared, glorious we how scared we were of it bro yeah it was terrifying it was terrifying this is the evil that was that we were scared of I, I, absolutely 100 percent. we were fucking scared to death of this terrified i don't know if i'm like man this is beautiful here we go and they i mean those moments that i, I i'm looking back now as, as as painful now i'm like i wonder if there's going to be something that i'm going to really consider pain with new perspective mm -hmm. like that like i mean Obviously, you know, nerves are manipulated in a certain way. There's a physical reaction or response that... It really sits back to what uh, O said in, what, February? That pain is a perception, a perspective? Like, that really is an interesting take on that. Besides, like, what you said, like, actual physical, like, yeah, if your bone yeah. breaks... Yeah, the definition... It's, yeah. The dictionary definition of physical pain, pain in the, in the physical sense. Yeah. But, yeah, mental anguish, like... I mean, I I can understand, like, you know, somebody passes or 
you know, grief. I can understand grief. Um, but even that, I feel like, is going to be transformed for me. Yeah. And it's not going to be the same as what grief was. Mm-hmm. Oh, hundred percent. Which, which was crippling at some points, and depending on the type of grief and where I was in other mm-hmm. states of mind. I, I totally agree. Like, my grandmother passing was a completely different experience than my father passing. Like, I was a completely different person. I experienced it in a completely different way but also because I was actively choosing to shift and change and to build I was active after my father I deliberately sought out seeking a healthy relationship with death because I did not feel like in the west we had that organically cultivated it was kind of I feel like there is an immense practice of avoidance in the acknowledgement, relationship, engagement with death until it literally is confronting you and you cannot do anything about it. And after having that visceral experience with my father transitioning, I refused to ever go through that ever again. It's like, well, because I cannot control never losing a loved one ever again, I must now build a relationship with death because I cannot suffer and go through this the way I suffered when... At my father transitioned, I just knew I could never, ever go through an experience like that ever again because I thought I was going to lose my... I thought I was no longer going to be here. And I was just like, this cannot be it. There has to be another way to experience this, which is what sent me into my new hyperfixation at the time and rabbit holes of how else in the world do people acknowledge and have a relationship with death? Because this ain't it like this whole the world falls apart and my world falls apart and the rest of the world could give a damn and struggling with the concept of not having space to grieve and to feel and to bless the feelings and allow them to exist and and then continue to move forward and through in life and how frustrated I was on my mom's behalf because of this idea of like this corporate structure and you have to go back to work and you are still like have this gaping hole in their existence uh really looking at okay I don't want that relationship with death uh with something that is inevitable so where do I go from here and yeah building these different perspectives and understandings and learning how different cultures honor death and actually have a relationship with it and it is not taboo encouraged me to welcome that and different ideas around death and it being transformation and transition rather than point blank end point and these ideas that everything that exists always has existed just maybe in a different form a different plan and a different thing that that energy transmutes but never dies and things of that nature and just building other understandings that help foster a different relationship with and then also embracing impermanence like this idea like that really helped expose my hyperfixation and obsession and desire and desperate need for absolutes control like how dismantling that has also created a whole different kind of freedom and yes I have to continually return to facing that and at times it's difficult but how that has also caused a completely different liberation in and of itself as well with being at peace with change and what we were just talking about not too long ago about resistance being suffering it's like I cannot resist what is, ha- if it is happening right now, what is the point of res- it is happening? So what is my resistance doing beyond cr- just crushing me on the inside and creating more of what I do not wish to have? And that whole idea of, like you even get told as a kid, it's almost bullying you if you just stop feeding into it sometimes that it really will go away Mm -hmm. and again no absolutes but looking at it like that like sometimes stuff really does just change when you stop feeding it when you stop giving it a particular type of energy or focus or structure or space when you stop giving it space to do the thing that it's doing it's gone it's done boy yeah it gets it gets beautiful doesn't it yeah, it is beautiful. It's exciting. Like, I feel like that is, to me, that is what I feel like hope 
hope is starting to shape itself into being. The infinite possibility and potential of a moment that and the belief that it is always good. Who did that say hope stood for? I mean, it's broken and I can break it down to that. I would love to hear it again because his acronyms are really dope. The way he broke those down was tight. But man, that, that whole idea of the latency concept and everything is, is definitely transformed in my mind after this conversation. Mm. Yeah. There's, there's one area where I still think that I'm still kind of like, mm. woo, Dr. Strange moment. <laughs> when, I, when I think about it and I'm still just kind of, just the thought rises and, I, and it's it rises frequently is what about from birth to you know the point where you consciously take control of your thoughts and your your um or can consciously make physical moves for yourself at least I don't know what's happening. Yeah, it, it just, and that's not something I don't think I can that make. I don't know if that's something that will ever be answered, mm -hmm. but it's just one that is still like, hmm. <clears throat> how does this theory, or how, at least the theory of you are living as a result of your past decisions, apply to that? So, what, and that's so funny because Malika talked about how Florence touched on that in her book. Uh, a little bit and I think you heard a little bit of it but she spoke on it specifically with illness but how when we first arrive we are living in the experience of our parents physically at least because they are who are moving us around making the decisions doing the things and how we are kind of out picturing them before we are quote-unquote so to speak out picturing us and ourselves um especially and then that makes me think of when reading through Dr. Joe Spender's work about how the different brain states and how before six, seven, five, whichever it was, like you really are in that, um, what is it, um, beta, theta state, like 24 seven, like that just in the cosmos, in the isness, consciousness, just the dream state, the subconscious state, um, and so really in a way, almost just absorbing whatever is coming through and it's usually your parents or whomever it is that has you in that early stage. And so you really are just kind of a mirror out picturing whatever it is that is around you. Kind of like what we were talking about yesterday about how we retain language as a child. It all starts from mimicking and mirroring. And so I wonder in a way, like, like you said, how does the latency thing apply to a newborn? I think to me, I'm kind of leaning into that idea of it possibly, yeah, having more to do with the parent. But then you talk about some people who believe in past lives and blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And then there are all those things like that. Yeah. And like the infinity. So choosing like, okay, where do I put my focus and energy? Yeah, exactly. Where it supports me. Exactly. Mm. Like, do I need to do I need to have the answer to those? And if I don't need to have a, an absolute answer, mm -hmm. then why form an opinion? Mm -hmm. like it could be hey, or fix it. I think maybe oh, it's possible, but as far as yes, this is absolutely true. Um, those those mindsets are, are do you need I'm finding it? fewer and fewer places where yeah. I can think of applying any of that. And as I'm each time we catch each other or I catch myself thinking of something as an absolute, it's really mind blowing to see how many things I took as absolutely this is how this must be how how fragile all that is. Yeah. And that I think that is what caused causes some of my moments of existentiality mm -hmm. is realizing just how non-absolute <clears throat> everything is and how we've sort of been conditioned in a society that has presented the idea that certain things are absolute. Mm -hmm. 
and we are now living through, we're living through almost like a wrecking ball age of a whole lot of that, even on the world stage being shattered, even down to concepts that everybody thought were just pillars and structure, i.e. gender, especially in the West. We are living through a massive on a wide frontal scale, because I know there's always been the places and the people who it directly impacts who have had this awareness and conversations and things of that nature, but now on a like very uh, front stage, so to speak, kind of way, we are seeing a lot of these different conversations take center stage and be a wrecking ball to what a lot of us were reared with as absolutes and as things that can give us safety in a sense, quote unquote, like things that made us feel safe because, oh, this just is what it is and it is. And how a lot of us kind of grew up with certain ideas that made us feel safe because it was like, oh, this just is. And then now learning that nothing, literally almost nothing just is. And that nothing is ever the same. Even to the point where we were talking about whatever the science is that talks about how you are just completely not even who you were yesterday because of how often all of your cells are regenerating. And that after like whatever the however many day period, your whole body is a completely different body because of how your cells regenerate and change and all of the things. And so how literally we many have grown up with this idea of absolute permanence, stability, and they're now having to live through learning, and for me for a while, felt like survive through learning that nothing is absolute or permanent. And how sometimes that turns into an existential place because it feels so overwhelming to have to face the idea that everything is flexible, everything fluctuates, nothing is permanent, nothing is absolute for this thing or for that thing. Like there is no real quote unquote anchor point to a pillar that you can say is just this. Like, and so now having to learn not to seek out that experience or that desire not to hunt for absolute permanence to find comfort but learning to establish comfort in flux and literally having to live what i claim for such a long time and just be like i go with the flow like how life has literally the universe has literally schooled me in a word that's your philosophy let me really uh initiate you in what you claim and that really has shown me on this whole different journey of oh wow like to truly go with the flow to live in non-resistance to live in understanding of impermanence and almost sometimes what seems like imbalance, but which actually is balance. And that balance is not absolute or structure or stability. Um, the universe is, you said the universe is. is yeah. Is that, is that a, you said the universe is showing me like, mm. is there a need for that um, way to express in your, in your mind? Or is that something just the way you prefer to express I think it's just common language that's helpful for me yeah. at the time to articulate. Because I think that's another place where I get existential sometimes. Yeah, I'm not getting caught up in it. I'm no, no, no. Just, I'm, no, I'm, I'm following the thread. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's where I get existential sometimes as well, too. Oh, babe, we got to make sure we're ready. It's 908. So okay. we should probably be moving as we do this. Uh, but that's something that makes I get to. Yes. Uh, I feel existential about sometimes as well is this idea that nothing is... Um, like in terms of the language mm -hmm. that's used 
like I use it sometimes and like it's a way that I can connect and relate because otherwise I'm like, okay, well then what language do I have to convey this at this point? Because at one point it was in the framework of the rhetoric of Christianity and then now it has shifted to a framework that is more loosely spiritual and science based. But I think for me, it's just like, okay, what verbiage, language, tongue can I use to communicate and convey whatever it is I'm thinking, feeling, whatever in this moment and not sharing it as an absolute, just sharing it as the vehicle that I have at that moment to share the idea, to convey. And knowing that even that may fall short because of the framework and the parameters of said language and the words chosen. I love it. I love it. I love how how gracefully we're able to have that conversation now. Whereas before it may have been a sticking point for me or a sticking point for you. Yeah. No. There's just an understanding. It's a language thing. It's strictly language. And it's for the purpose of communicating. It's not necessarily a my thoughts mm-hmm. specifically is just a a way that I, a way that I'm choosing to try to convey my thoughts to you in this particular moment because I think it's something that's that makes it easier. And I think that's yeah. And I think that's something I used to struggle with too when we would have those conversations. Was I think to me it felt detrimental to um because I think I would get to a place of like oh I don't know how else to convey this and communicate this in this moment. This is just the understanding and the grasp that I have of this thing to be able to communicate it in this way. And then also I think I would get scared of like, okay, well, journeying so far, I just may not ever speak again because there there may not be any words to actually, fully, at least in the English language, which is the language that I have at the moment, uh, to convey some of these things, which would sometimes just lull me to silence because it's like, okay, well, if there's places that we can pick apart all of these things, then how do I communicate then? If all of these words, all of the, if there's ideas attached to all of these words, which then make them in some way null and void or feel not wholly and completely perfect to articulate something, then how do I articulate anything? And so I think that's what's brought me to a comfortable space of just this is the means that I have to share these things, feelings, ideas in this moment that may change, may, will change moment to moment. But right now it simply is. And this is where I am in the flux of things and how I can convey that in a way that hopefully translates to whomever, to you, to whomever I'm connecting with at that time. And Hopefully the transmission goes through. Yeah. And kind of like what you said, like just moving with, yeah, my anchor and my whole point of using it in the first place is to connect and to have some shared something. Thank you for this conversation. You know, allow me to record it too. <laughs> yeah. I felt like I was nervous about recording because so like I don't want it to take away the, you know, the genuine authenticity of the moment. But I was like, I, I know this is, you know, she got this. She's she's gonna be her. And I, we're gonna be us. You can kill it whatever you want. Yes, we are. Peace, love, and fairness. We gotta go.